Hello and welcome. So you're ready to make your placement request to a specific for a specific federal prison. And this, you and your attorney have reviewed long before your sentencing hearing and possibly before your pre-sentence interview. So there's three basic steps that occur. First, you want to make a placement request that is based on a medical need, a program need. There has to be a reason. It can be healthcare, mental or mental health care issues. It can be first step back type of programs, which is RDAP, for example, a drug program that allows up to a year off your sentence. They also have occupational and vocational trade trainings. So these, as long as these, these reasons are documented in your pre-sentence report, the judge may agree if you can, that he'll listen or she will listen to a placement request. The next is that you want to request just one prison only. Not a general, I want something close to me, or I. For, there's no other way to do it. You need to give one name of one facility. Here I say at Federal Prison Camp Alderson, which is all women, but that's just for this example here. Then you want to suggest a date of surrender, the third week of the month, sometime between the 14th and the 21st. And that will allow you, because when you go into prison, you're going to need to buy essentials, underwear, socks, sneakers, toothpaste, toothbrush. Um, all of that you're going to have to do, and if you come in in the latter part of the month, you then will have a quicker turnaround to when you are able to go in and shop again to finish off getting things that you need. If the judge agrees, that's great. This, this is an information packet that I'll show you shortly, but it allows you and your attorney to decide what programs apply to you, and then to either make the request before your pre-sentence interview and or uh, before your sentencing hearing through the sentencing memorandum with some documentation to give the court. Last, your attorney is going to ask that if the Federal Bureau of Prisons is not able to make that request, would they be able to notify the court in writing as to why not? Because they have the final say on all issues. And you want to have make sure that you choose what's the best facility for you that meets your needs. Ultimately, though, the Federal Bureau of Prisons makes the final determination. It's a, the, depending on bed availability, faith bed needs your security designation level, which will determine the number. You know, it's a similar to the number of months you'll have to you'll have to spend in prison. Different types of programs. We reviewed that medical and mental health care needs. We did. We reviewed that. The <clears throat> Federal Bureau of Prisons does make. They try and make a conscientious effort three quarters of the time or seventy five percent of the time to do this. There may be other security reasons that they can't honor. I mean, if there is a someone else that you were convicted with, they don't want you both, I don't believe, in the same prison. And lastly, they're going to try and place you within 500 miles of your legal residence, but that does not always happen. So there's two packets that I provide here that allows you to gather information about the prison that you may go to. So we're going to, we're going to use Otisville as, as an example. And this is the prison, FCI Otisville. It's a medium security institution with an adjacent medium satellite camp and detention center. I'm going to try and make this bigger. Oh, it wasn't going on as fast. Okay, next is that it's a medium with a medium satellite camp. Some of the programs that they <clears throat> have available is computer skills, floor maintenance is the type of job, horticulture, which is landscaping, textiles, and production, occupational education. But there's a whole list of all of this, plus the availability, find hotels near where you need to go, et cetera. This is First Step Act available programs that are specific for this particular program. These are all that is available, but what's available in, in this location that is not available in all locations, that's what's on this list, is the Resolve program. And that box is checked, and you'll see it shortly. In addition, all the programs on these pages to follow would be available at all institutions with the exception of the female institutions. This also would be a care level two. And the care level two facility, they have the ability to provide for most type of medical care. It's similar to your own internal medicine practice that you may go to. Other resources, there's some articles that you can go to. This is noted mostly because it has a larger Jewish clientele. And they provide specific meals. Let's see if I can get that bigger. Different holidays over the and then different days of the week. And so you know, it may be more comfortable for some people if you're Jewish to go to this type of facility. Into the programs. 
Here's a management program. This is at all facilities. These are anger, another apprenticeship type program. These are at all the facilities. I'll just kind of go through them, make this smaller. It's a reading program. It might not apply to everybody. This is one for basic cognitive skills on criminal thinking, bureau literacy program, certification course, <clears throat> which is provided at all locations, cognitive processing, criminal thinking, right? This, these are different programs. And for the First Step Act, if they give you a program and they say criminal thinking, don't argue, accept it graciously. You know, that, that you know, you're, you are gr grateful to be offered this program, you know, in the first place. And then try and take notes on every, cla every class or program that you attend. Emotional self-regulation, there's a lot. This is a faith-based conflict type program, family programming. There is Hooked on Phonics, which will help those with reading issues, illness management and recovery. As you can see, there's a lot here. Smart money, how to handle money, how, how to parent from prison. And, you know, it's not easy things, but this is available at all prisons now. Even though they say they're available at all prisons, due to these staffing shortages that we have all read about, they may not, they may be available, but the waiting list to get in may be very lengthy. So kind of keep that in the back of your hat. Non-residential drug abuse program. This is the Resolve program that I said was in there. <clears throat> and as you can see, Otisville is right there. And this is available at the medium. There's many other resource tools for transgender defendants seeking safety and strength, social skills training. Again, if you're given, if you're offered one of these programs, don't roll your eyes, please. Just take the program. That's where you get your credits to attempt to try and get out earlier, as long as you don't get in trouble. Threshold is a faith-based type program. Transitioning, if you are transitioning about identities, vocational training, wellness inside and out. Now we're going to get into the productive activities. And here, there's a lot. I mean, I'm not going to be able to go into all of them. <clears throat> It'll be noted here, all institutions, or if they're female institutions, but there's a lot. These are all different, you know, circle of strength. If you have a complicated grief from a loved one that has passed, these are all different types of programs that could be offered to you while you're in prison and take the class. Because if you refuse, that may not, that may not help you as you work to get out of prison earlier. Wellness and recovery. There's a lot here. These are mostly reviews of different prisons. And now we're going to get into the different types of occupational trades training. So right here, most of this, if not all of it, is located at the main or the medium, not at the satellite camp. I'm sure that there are other programs that are offered at the satellite camp, but this is all that was published. I know I've gone through this quickly, but you can always go to the website and go to this particular page and you'll find PPRs Otisville. Next, there is what's something called the Correction Information Council. They're out of Washington, D.C. They investigate all prisons that house D.C. residents. So in this particular case, even though you're not a D.C. resident, the information they provide here is very valuable. So here comes up FCI report. This is from 2016. But, you know, some of these are newer and older. And it goes through in detail. Let me make this bigger. And it says that they, they're an independent oversight body mandated by the Congress. And exactly what they do, let's see, although it does not handle individual complaints, it does provide legal representative or advice, and people are encouraged to contact them in Washington, D.C. Here is their contact information. And then, as you see, they give different type of information here. They give the medium capacity um, what's the occupancy? So it's over capacity as of this particular report on the 14th or 2014, rather. It reviews best practices at the at the low rate of significant in incident. FCI Hodesville has the lowest number of significant incidents, which includes inmate assaults, attempted assaults, staff use of force, et cetera. So the low, low occupancy of the special housing unit or isolation. I mean, yeah, it's kind of important to know, you know, as as to when you pick a place where you're going to go to. The facility offers 27 apprenticeship programs, a master gardener program, Thurk Grinnell University, 
agricultural life science, vocational training programs, computer access type programs. Education is a priority here. <clears throat> they have correspondence classes. So this is more up-to-date information than is available on the Federal Bureau of Prisons website. Although this is from 2014, I'm sure it's, I, I like to think that it's pretty close to the same as it is today. It has a Unicor factory uh, that they converted the space into vocational programs. Here it goes into a little more detail that they'll cover, demographics, we're to review. They have medical indicators, medical care, medication, dental. I go into that in other places of the website. So I'll just kind of try and go through this, but it goes through a percentage of population of violent offenders, drug offenders, sex offenders, um, general information, Otis facilities, medium security facility for males. Uh, there is an executive assistant. They have a staff. <clears throat> With the, with the executive assistant, general housing, it goes through the CIA. They inspected two housing units during the on-site visit. The facility contains 154 inmates each, as well as a satellite camp. Each unit contains two, four, 12-person cells. Most units are staffed by case manager. However, unit two has two case managers, et cetera. It goes through a little bit of the shoe here, but you get some background information on this. That you wouldn't actually that is not available through the Federal Bureau of Prisons website. It goes through different types of health health conditions, mental health conditions, other types of mental issues that are being treated. You can always pause this video to read this more carefully. As I said, it's a care level two facility, similar to your family internal medicine uh, practice. It's dental care, mental health care. They have psychology services. They have a psychologist. They have three psychologists there. They have the residential. They do not have the residential drug abuse program. So you need to be transferred if that's where you want to go. So they go tell us through different things that you wouldn't normally get through the BOP website. <clears throat> Within 60 days of arrival, you must demonstrate that you have a high school diploma or a GED. Well, if you're a physicist, doctor, or lawyer, or president of the United States, if you don't have a your diploma from what the, le the highest level of education you achieved, they're going to make, make you get your GED. As silly as that sounds, that's just how it's going to work. They give you vocational training. They went through how, how, horticulture, aquaphonics, master gardener program, et cetera. Federal prisons and industries also know my training in Unicor is government owned and employs them. Unicor offers valuable vocational skills. So they may have a Unicor facility there. Administrative remedy, you want to use that process if you have a problem. And you can go through this, but there's, you know, there's a lot here. Visitation, email, general mail. So this is, they already have true links. So you understand how that works from looking at other parts of my website. Religious service, recreation, they do a lot of things. They have, I was going to say a swimming pool, but it's an indoor pool, foosball, band room. They have class ceramics, painting, advanced painting, t-shirt design. There's a lot of things that they offer here. <clears throat> Commissary, it's still, now I understand it was $350 a month, but I'm speaking to people now that say that it's up to $500 a month. I'm not sure. So I don't have an answer for you there. Inmates have positive comments. Six positive comments. This is a very good form to review. And then they have the back and forth between the uh, prison itself and the CIC staff to make sure that, you know, everything is at least running as smooth because they will come and inspect it. And so these, not all prisons have the CIC information, but it's good to know if in fact it's available, it gives you that much more information with which to make a good decision. I hope you have found this helpful. This is, I have a lot of information here on my website, Physician Pre-Sentence Report Service, White Collar Investigations, you can go here to re the resources page. All of this is for free. And while it's overwhelming, you can go through. Oh, I didn't transfer. Let's see. Let's try that again. And I guess it's not. There it goes. And so here, this gives you all the information that you need. You can review on your own. There's a YouTube, I think, yep, coming up in there. And then here's 
all these are links. These are popular videos. And then these are all resources. I go through pre-sentence interview preparation, preparing for the sentencing hearing, life in prison, first step back, halfway house, home confinement, supervised release, general reference, and promises. Anyone promises or guarantees anything to you, an attorney, consultant, whoever you may be working with, I turn around and walk the other way because no one can tell you what the Federal Bureau of Prison is going to do on any day and how the your judge is going to act at sentencing. It's just not possible. Thank you very much for taking your time to tune in and listen to this, and I hope you all have a safe day. I appreciate your time.